talk about a huge surplus of cash. But now what? Is it finding its way into the market? Should it find its way in? Yeah, I wrote this week about mountains of cash, and I loved your plant joke, by the way. You want to go by the wayside. And, you know, if you look at it right now, there's just so much money in the system. If you look at just like the cumulative amount of money in money market funds, Nicole, it's like $4.3 trillion. Now, that's fr down from $4.8 trillion. That's where we were in May. Uh, but it's still way above where we were after the great financial crisis. It was like $3.9 trillion. So I think the point here is, you know, we talked about consumers sitting on a lot of cash right now and not really having anywhere to spend it. Um, some of that money is seeping its way into the stock market. In fact, a lot of money is seeping its way into the stock market and it's starting to show a lot of speculation. If you start looking at options contracts, you had a half a trillion dollars traded one day alone in January, which is like the highest number ever. And that speaks to just pure speculation because when you're starting to buy these smaller option contracts, it's kind of like buying lotto tickets, Nicole. You know, I'm starting to wonder, too, as people get more savvy with trading, if that contributes to the amount of options contracts. Probably not enough to set the tone, but I would think that more and more folks with the great trading platforms like Thinkorswim, um, that they're able to learn more and more. That being said, tell me about market sentiment. How are you feeling? What do you think people are saying for 2021? It's definitely wildly bullish at this point. If you start looking at sentiment indicators like the AAI investment uh, indicator, which basically looks at what the perception of stock price is six months out, it's above 40%, which is historically very, very high. So you are starting to see more wildly bullish behavior. And also, you know, last year, I was one of the few people calling for a V-shaped recovery. At that point, I was not in the majority. And it was much harder to be bullish but now kind of the cat's out of the bag, right? We know we have mass vaccinations going on. We know that we just talked about all this cash sitting on the sidelines you know, between corporations and consumers. They're just waiting, all that pent up demand to spend that cash. Like I'm looking to have a lot of parties on my roof deck this summer, Nicole, and you're invited. But you know, the point is it's not, you know, it's not a secret mm -hmm. anymore. And invariably markets are forward looking. So, you know, I'm hearing a lot of you know, kind of analysis saying, well, you know, there's a lot more upside here in the market because it's going to be a great year come the second half of the year. Well, the market already knows that, right? The market's forward looking and you start looking at price to earnings multiples like the S&P 500 is a great example of this, which is driven by big tech. It trades at like 23 times forward earnings. Now that's like in the 90th percentile of expensiveness. So, you know, a lot of markets right now aren't exactly cheap, and sentiment is wildly bullish in some areas. And you're talking about some of the, the speculation like GameStop is one of those stocks that's just been up astronomically this year, having a tremendous short squeeze. And there's a lot of young investors with those stimulus checks just playing the market, talking on places like Reddit, um, essentially making big bets on a lot of these, you know, a lot of these smaller, these penny stocks, really, uh, along with big tech is another place you're seeing a lot of speculation. And look, I don't have a crystal ball. But markets definitely do rhyme, and it's starting to look a little more like 99, 2000 when we had the great tech wreck eventually. I have to think this is going to end badly at some point as well. So you do see some sort of, is it the pullback just for some of these names that are being shorted and then sort of manipulated uh, to the upside? Well, just being overbought at this point, like a name like GameStop, AMCX, uh, Mac, Fizz, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, just to just to go go. All of these names are names that people are watching very closely. Um, are you a believer that it's these names that are problematic and could sell off? Is it tech that's going to sell off or is it the whole market and then that presents a buying opportunity? I think those parts of the market specifically, you know, are definitely kind of pump and dump, right? You read on Reddit, uh, you know, what to buy this stock and you get the whole crowd kind of getting into some of these names. And I also think when you talk about big tech, which drives the S&P 500, I mean, Tesla, the rise has been astronomical here. It actually looks the way Apple did back in 99, 2000, had a huge run up just like Tesla is today. And then the stock proceeded to lose 80% of its value. So I don't think it's far fetched to say a lot of these tech names you know, can have a tremendous sell-off at some point in the future. Now, having said that, and you go back to 99, 2000, because I like to use history as our guide here, a lot of markets sure. held up well when the tech bubble finally burst. 
And I think you have the same thing today. You have a lot of cheap multiples out there too. You know, numerous times I've spoken about on your show just how cheap energy is. I mean, energy has been in a bear market since 2014 uh, and it's starting to move upwards now again. Commodities have been in a bear market for a long time. Financials did nothing for the last couple of years. They're starting to break out again. So it's kind of like if we had this sine wave, you know, technology growth stocks are, they're at the top of the sine wave. It's getting long in the tooth, that trend. And the meanwhile, at the, at the bottom here, just starting the trend, you have old school value stocks. You have things like uh, financials, energy stocks, materials, a lot of the reopening trade. Those type of stocks are just getting moving and their multiples are a lot cheaper. And you can also argue the same thing about the international market. A lot cheaper. You've got a weaker dollar now. Those markets have done really, really well. Emerging markets are leading U.S. markets this year. So there's a lot of places to put your money and they're a lot cheaper than just owning big tech here.